Mary Immaculate Hospital's Patient's Guide to Shoulder Replacement Surgery. Welcome to our virtual shoulder replacement seminar. My name is Debbie and I'm your nurse navigator. I want to thank you for choosing Mary Immaculate Hospital to help restore you to a higher quality of living after your shoulder replacement surgery. This presentation will help to outline the surgical process from getting ready for surgery to recovering at home, providing clear expectations regarding your orthopedic care. You play a key role in ensuring a successful recovery, and our goal is to involve you in your treatment through each step of the program. Your education and compliance will help to ensure a safe and successful surgical outcome. Please feel free to email me or call me if you have any questions. Education book. All the information presented in this seminar can also be found in the education book about your shoulder replacement. You should have gotten a copy of the book from your surgeon's office. However, if you did not get a copy of the book, you can download a copy of the book by closing out this seminar once you're done and right below it, you will see a banner where you can click and download the shoulder replacement book. However, if you'd rather, you can call your surgeon's office and ask them to mail you a copy of the book or you can stop by the office and pick up a copy of the book. Please read this book after you watch this seminar as there's more information presented in the book than in this seminar. Fill out the survey. When you're done watching the seminar, please close out the seminar and fill out the survey located right below the banner Preoperative Education. When you fill out the survey, a copy will be emailed to me and I will then be able to let your surgeon know you watched the seminar. There's also a place in there to ask me questions. Please provide me a working phone number and a working email address so that I can answer your questions as you get ready for surgery. But you can also email me after surgery and I can answer your questions after surgery. Bon Secours My Chart. Please set up your My Chart account now. You can access all your appointment times, test results, surgery notes, and financial information through the Bon Secor MyChart. To get help setting up your MyChart account if you haven't activated, please call 1-866-385-7060. About your surgery. You will find general information about your shoulder replacement surgery in the education book along with this seminar. Please speak with your surgeon for more detailed information about your specific surgery to include how the surgery will be performed and what implant may be used. Preoperative testing. Once you and your orthopedic surgeon have agreed that surgery is the best option for you, your surgeon's office will send information to our pre-anesthesia testing department regarding your surgical procedure. From here, you will be scheduled for a pre-operative nursing interview. You will receive a phone call from our pre-anesthesia testing staff before your surgery to schedule your nursing interview. During this important scheduled time with the PAT nurse, you will be asked to share your medical history, surgical history, allergies to both foods and medications, and your daily medications to include vitamins, herbal supplements, and anything over the counter, topical or oral. Be sure to have the bottles available for this interview so that you can provide the medication name, dosage, and how often you take it. Your personal medical history will determine what preoperative testing you will need before surgery. While your nursing interview must be scheduled, your medical tests may be completed without an appointment. Please do this within 30 days of surgery. Common tests include lab work, which is non-fasting, meaning you can eat prior to the lab draw, an EKG, a chest x-ray, and a urinalysis. The results of your test will be sent to your surgeon and you will be contacted if the test results are abnormal. It is also best to undergo a complete physical examination with your family physician within 30 days of surgery. Your surgeon will let you know if this is a requirement for surgery. 
If you have any high-risk medical conditions or see a specialty doctor, you may be required to obtain surgical clearance from these physicians. During your scheduled nursing interview, you will be instructed on which medications to stop taking, when to stop taking them, and which medications you should continue to take based on your surgeon and anesthesia guidelines. Please make sure you have a piece of paper and a pencil handy during this interview so that you can write down the medications and the instructions that the nurse gives you. You can find examples of some of these medications listed in your education book. Herbal supplements, vitamins, and over-the-counter medications need to be stopped 14 days before surgery. This includes oral and topical medications. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, also known as NSAIDs, are generally requested to be stopped seven days before surgery due to the increased risk of bleeding. Anticoagulants or blood thinning medications are also generally requested to be stopped in the weeks leading up to your surgery. Check with your surgeon and prescribing physi physician regarding when to stop these medications. Please be aware if you do not stop them, your surgery may be postponed. Diabetic medication. Please talk to your prescribing physician about how to manage your diabetic medication before surgery. Often, you will be told to either take half or less of the medication or to stop the medication the night before or the morning of surgery. Your daily routine medications. Again, the PAT nurse will review these medications with you and let you know which ones to stop, when to stop them, and which medications you need to keep taking. Again, please write this information down as it's easy to forget as you wait for surgery. Pain medication. You may continue to take the following pain medication as prescribed to manage your pain as you wait for surgery. However, we recommend you try to cut back on the amount and frequency you take the narcotic so that the narcotic pain medication prescribed to you after surgery will work better. If you see a pain management doctor, please make sure you inform them you are having surgery. If you have any questions about medications before surgery, please call our pre-anesthesia testing nurses at 757 886-6411 or 6300. Get ready for surgery starting today. Pick a coach. What is a coach? A coach is a friend or family member, but should be someone who you trust to encourage and support you through the surgical process. Have your coach watch this seminar and read through the education book so they know how to help you stay on track as you get ready and recover from surgery. Stop smoking. Smoking increases the risk of lung complications during and after surgery, but did you know it also slows down your body's ability to heal itself after surgery and it increases the risk of getting an infection in your new shoulder joint. If you're not ready to stop smoking, at least cut back two weeks before surgery, and don't smoke the day before or the morning of surgery. Stop alcohol intake or limit your alcohol intake to less than one drink per day two weeks before surgery. After surgery, please check with your surgeon before you resume any alcohol intake. But if you're taking a narcotic, a muscle relaxer, or an anti-anxiety medication, you should not be drinking alcohol at all. Eat healthy. Eating healthy is what helps you to heal after surgery. Maintaining a healthy diet promotes healing, gives you energy to do the recovery. It decreases the risk of an infection in your new surgical site. For diabetics, it helps you to maintain a healthy blood sugar it also decreases the risk of heart disease and high blood pressure. We recommend you prepare and freeze or purchase small portioned healthy meals for times you may be alone. It's normal not to be hungry after surgery, but you still need to eat so that you heal and don't get an infection. 
We recommend also you have some protein supplements like protein bars, protein powders, or pre-made protein drinks such as Ensure, Boost, or Premium Premier for times you may not be as hungry to supplement in on your diet. Keep a safe home environment. Go around your house and check any handrails you have to make sure they're not loose and secure them in place. If you don't have handrails and you have time, we recommend you have some installed so that you don't fall. You want to remove any tripping hazards such as throw rugs and long cords. You want to arrange your furniture so you can easily move about your house. Put night lights in dark hallways and in bathrooms so that you're safe when you get up and walk at night. Put everything you use on a daily basis at the counter level including your shoes so that you can easily grab things. Stay active. The more active you are as you wait for surgery, the better you'll recover after surgery. Remember, motion is lotion and it helps to keep things loose. Make sure to buy these things before surgery. You may not get a prescription for a stool softener or a laxative, but you need to take one after surgery. We also recommend you have some Tylenol or acetaminophen, again the protein supplements, and we recommend you have ice packs or an ice machine to put on your shoulder as you recover as it helps to decrease swelling. Cleaning your skin three nights before surgery. You should get your CHG bathing solution from our registration department when you come for your preoperative testing. If you did not get the CHG bathing solution, you can either come by registration and ask them for the cleaning solution or call our pre-anesthesia testing department at 757-886-6411 to find out where you can get the solution. It's important that you do bathe for three nights as it decreases the risk of infection after surgery when and where to come for surgery. The day before surgery, you will get a call from your surgeon's office telling you what time to report. Some patients have reported getting automated messages or somebody else calling them and telling them a different time than what their surgeon's office told them. Please disregard those messages and only come at the time your surgeon's office tells you to report. If your surgery is on Monday, you will get a call Friday afternoon. You will check into the surgical pavilion, which is located next to our emergency room department. Shoulder replacement. The plan is for you to go home the day of surgery. Remember, this is outpatient elective surgery, which means you have time to get yourself and your home ready for you to go home the day of surgery. We will talk about how to get ready in an upcoming slide. However, the first 24 hours after surgery, you will need someone to stay with you from, to monitor you from the effects of anesthesia. You will have a sling on and you will follow your surgeon's instructions on how often and when to wear the sling. But at first, while the sensory nerve block is on board and you can't feel your hands or your arm, you need to keep that sling on to protect your new shoulder replacement. If for some reason you anticipate you won't be able to go home, you have no support, please speak with your surgeon before surgery to discuss this with him. But remember, this is elective outpatient surgery, so you have time to get friends and family to assist you for the first few days after surgery. Please don't be afraid to ask for help. People often want to help. We just don't like to ask for help. Items to bring with you the day of surgery include your CPAP machine, your denture and glasses case, and feel free to bring your cell phone. Day of surgery. Please check in for surgery at the location and time you were instructed to by your surgeon's office. Once you check in, then you'll be taken to the pre-op area to get ready for surgery. You'll change out of your clothes, including your underwear, wipe off with CHG wipes, and then put a clean hospital gown and non-skid socks on. You'll have your nostrils swabbed with an antiseptic, have an IV started in the non-surgical arm, and you will also be given any medication your surgeon decides you need to take before surgery. 
Once you're ready, one family member or friend will be allowed to come and wait with you till it's time for you to go to the holding area. In the holding area, you will meet your anesthesia team. Your anesthesiologist will review your history, including your medications, discuss the anesthesia plan for the day, answer any questions you might have, and then have you sign your anesthesia consent. Once you've signed your consent, you will be given medication through your IV to take away pain and help you relax as your anesthesiologist performs an interscaling nerve block. We will discuss this block in the next slide. Once you're ready, you'll go back for surgery. You can anticipate surgery to take about an hour and a half or two hours. Sometimes revisions take longer. Once your surgery is complete, then you'll be taken to the PACU, also known as the recovery room, to wake up from the effects of anesthesia. Once your anesthesia team deems you safe, then you will be transferred to our phase two discharge unit, where you'll be allowed to have one family member or friend come and wait with you as you continue to wake up from the effects of anesthesia. You'll be given some ginger ale and crackers. We'll get you up to help you urinate. Once you've urinated, and you're awake, the nurses in the phase two discharge area will go over your discharge instructions and then you will be able to go home with your family or friends. Anesthesia information. General anesthesia. General anesthesia is a combination of anesthetic gases and IV medications. You will have a mask placed over your mouth and nose for you to breathe in oxygen before you are put to sleep. You will be given medication through your IV that puts you to sleep. Once you're asleep, a breathing tube will be inserted in your mouth to give you oxygen and anesthetic gases that help you stay asleep and manage your breathing during surgery. Also, IV medication is used to keep you asleep and manage your pain during surgery. Your anesthesia team will monitor to you and make sure you stay asleep during surgery. Inner scaling nerve block. This is a sensory motor nerve block. It is a single injection of a local anesthetic onto or near a nerve at the base of your neck into the group of nerves that supply your surgical arm. It is a sensory and motor block, meaning you will not be able to move or feel your arm after the injection. This block will provide pain relief for up to six to 12 hours after surgery. Managing sleep after surgery. It is often hard to sleep for the first few weeks after surgery. This is because you're laying at night thinking about everything you've done all day and your brain is not being distracted and therefore all you do is focus on the aching, throbbing, and soreness that you're experiencing after surgery. Some tips to help you sleep after surgery include limiting your fluids and caffeine after dinner, Stay as active as possible during the day, including getting up every hour and walking short distances. We encourage you to have rest periods during the day, but make sure you don't sleep for hours on end as it will be harder to sleep at night. An hour before you to go to bed, stop looking at your cell phone, iPad, television, or laptop as they emanate blue lights that stimulate your brain and make it harder to go to sleep. You can take some melatonin or Benadryl to help you sleep. If you decide that you'd like to take some Benadryl to help you sleep, make sure you do not take it at the same time as you take your narcotic pain medication. You want to spread those out by at least two hours because both of those can decrease your breathing and we like you breathing normally at night. During the night, if you have a lot of pain, we recommend you get up and walk around in order to loosen up those muscles and warm them up and then lay back down and go to sleep. Managing nausea. The medications you're taking and anesthesia and often not eating enough contribute to nausea after surgery. Therefore, you need to eat before you take any medications. This is really important, especially if you get up in the middle of the night and move around and decide you need to take your pain medication, please eat a snack. It's always wise to keep food on your stomach. Therefore, just eat small meals frequently throughout the day. Anything with ginger and peppermint in it help soothe the stomach and help with digestion.
It's often normal not to be hungry after surgery, and if you have an upset stomach, sometimes it's easier to drink protein supplements. We recommend you have protein bars, protein powders, or pre-made protein drinks, such as Ensure, Boost, or Premium Premier, to help you when you're not as hungry. And then, of course, you can take over-the-counter medications, such as Nexium, Omeprazole, or Pepsid, or you can also take some antacids like Tums or Rolates. If your nausea persists and it's impacting your ability to eat after surgery, please call your surgeon's office because they may be able to prescribe a medication for nausea for you to take. Managing pain. Our goal is for you to have pain tolerance after shoulder replacement surgery. Here are some ways to help you manage pain as you recover from your shoulder replacement. Deep breathing. We recommend you take a deep breath in, for a three to five second count, hold it for three to five seconds, and then blow out your breath for three to five seconds. As you do this, concentrate on your breathing so that you're not thinking about the pain. It also helps you to relax your body as we normally tense up when we're in pain. Distraction. Don't sit around and think about the pain. We recommend you watch TV, read a book, do a crossword puzzle, talk to family and friends, or get up and do things in your house so that you're not thinking about the pain. Elevation and ice. Ice is very helpful to decrease swelling and to help ease the pain, so we recommend you use ice 20 minutes on every hour while you're awake. We also recommend that you use pillows to help elevate and support your arm so that it helps to get you in a more comfortable position. It's important that you change positions frequently as staying in one position you'll find you get too stiff and sore and that increases the pain in your shoulder and in your neck and back. And then of course you'll be prescribed prescription medication such as narcotics and non-prescription medications such as Tylenol in order to help you manage your pain after surgery. We'll discuss medications in a future slide. Medications after surgery. You may be prescribed a blood thinner such as aspirin after shoulder replacement surgery. It's really up to what your doctor deems is best for your recovery. Please be aware that a blood thinner tends to make you bleed easier and bruise easier. So therefore, be careful brushing your teeth or shaving after surgery. Don't be surprised if over the first week or two after your shoulder replacement, you noticed increased bruising. That's normal, and if you're taking a blood thinner, that makes it worse. Narcotic pain medication. Narcotic pain medication is prescribed to help you have pain tolerance after your shoulder replacement surgery. Please make sure that you're aware of the side effects of a narcotic which are dry mouth, nausea or vomiting if you take it on an empty stomach, decreased appetite, constipation is a big problem after surgery, you can be too sleepy if you take a narcotic too frequently, or a narcotic can make it a little more challenging to sleep, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. You may be prescribed a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory after surgery by your surgeon if they feel that will help you with your recovery. Please be aware side effect of a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory is thinning your blood out causing you to bruise and bleed easier. It can also upset your stomach if you take it on an empty stomach, so please make sure you eat before you take one. And you need to drink plenty of fluids as an NSAID can damage your kidneys. Over-the-counter or prescription stool softener laxative. You may or may not be prescribed a stool softener or laxative after surgery, but you need to make sure that you have some at the house. Constipation is a big problem after surgery. Even if you're not eating as much, you still need to make sure your bowels move. If your bowels don't move within two to three days of surgery, then please make sure that you increase what you're doing. Tylenol also known as acetaminophen for pain. As you wait for surgery, you may have been told to stop medications that normally help with your pain. You can safely take Tylenol as you wait for surgery as it doesn't thin your blood out. 
how to safely take Tylenol is one of two ways. You can take extra strength Tylenol two pills three times a day, or you can take Tylenol arthritis one pill four times a day. If you're taking a narcotic and you want to supplement in with some Tylenol, please make sure you check to, that your narcotic does not contain Tylenol as you do not want to take more than 3,000 milligrams of Tylenol in a 24-hour period. Narcotics that do not contain Tylenol include a plain oxycodone, roxycodone, Dilaudid, also known as hydromorphone, tramadol, also known as Ultram. After surgery, we recommend if your narcotic does not contain Tylenol that you put yourself on the Tylenol schedule as you recover your muscles after surgery. Tylenol is excellent to help with muscle soreness, aching, and throbbing. We recommend you do not take Tylenol if you've been told by a provider that you should not take it or if you're allergic to it. Prevent complications. You are the key to preventing complications after your shoulder replacement. What you do or don't do impacts your recovery. Blood clots. Blood clots happen when blood is not circulating as readily as it normally does and the blood sticks together and forms a clot. The best way to prevent blood clots is to get up and walk short distances every hour you're awake. Change positions while you're lying and sitting. You want to rotate your wrist and squeeze your hand in and out 10 times an hour to promote circulation to your fingertips. You want to do ankle pumps or ankle rotations 10 times an hour to promote circulation to your toes. Constipation. Constipation is a side effect of anesthesia narcotic pain medicine, muscle relaxers, and also decreased mobility and not eating enough fruits and vegetables after surgery. To prevent constipation, the first tip I wanna give you is do not show up for surgery constipated. Make sure your bowels move the day before or the morning of surgery. After surgery, you wanna get up and move, take a stool softener and or a mild laxative once to twice a day, and drink plenty of water along with eating your fruits and vegetables. If your bowels do not move within two to three days after surgery, you need to increase the amount of stool softener and or laxative you're taking. Many people make the mistake of thinking they don't need to have a bowel movement after surgery because they haven't been eating as much as they normally do. This is not true. It is very important that you get your bowels to move within three days of surgery, even if you're not eating as much. That is why people have a lot of problems with constipation after surgery. Infection. To prevent an infection after surgery, keep your incision clean and dry. Bathe off daily using an antibacterial soap. Do not shower until your surgeon tells you it's safe to shower. You want to wash your hands frequently. Again, eating healthy promotes healing, decreases the risk of an infection. If you're diabetic, it's important you maintain a normal blood sugar as you are at higher risk for infection when you have a higher blood sugar. And if you smoke, again, refrain from smoking as you're recovering from shoulder replacement as it increases the risk of an infection in your new sh shoulder joint. Pneumonia. Pneumonia happens when we're not up moving around as much and fluid and everything we breathe in settles in our lungs leading to pneumonia. The best way to prevent pneumonia is to get up and move short distances every hour you're awake. Use your incentive spirometer to take deep breaths 10 times every hour while you're awake. If you don't have an incentive spirometer or you can't find yours, it's okay. You can take deep breaths, hold it, cough, and then breathe out 10 times an hour. And again, good hand washing also helps to prevent pneumonia. Home after surgery. Our goal is for you to recover at home in your comfortable surroundings with your friends and family to support you as you recover from your shoulder replacement surgery. Your surgeon's office will arrange for home health before surgery if your surgeon feels you need it after your shoulder replacement. Home health services may include a physical therapist and or a nurse. 
please follow your surgeon's discharge instructions as you recover from shoulder replacement. Follow their instructions about bathing, moving your arm, wearing your sling, and how to manage your surgical dressing. If you're not sure, please give your surgeon's office a call, or if you have a home health agency, please call them. Once you go for your first post-op checkup, then your surgeon will arrange for outpatient therapy so that you can move on the road to recovery after your shoulder replacement. Thank you for choosing Mary Immaculate Hospital to have your shoulder replacement surgery. We look forward to helping you on the road to recovery. Please feel free to email me or call me if you have any questions or would like to review any of the information provided in this seminar or located in your preoperative book. Remember, after you close out this seminar, please go out and fill out the survey. Again, thank you and have a wonderful day.